As to the Minister for the Environment, Community and Local Government, the crisis facing families of seriously ill or impaired individuals who are having to wait two years for a housing adaptation grant, housing aid for the older persons grant or mobility grant. Uh, the deputies have four minutes in total to make an initial statement. Uh, Deputy Sean Crow. Uh, go on, Margaret. Uh, first of all, I suppose uh, is the Minister aware of the difficulties that are facing families? And I suppose I'm hoping in your reply that you will outline what you're actually going to do in relation to it. Um, these grants will, can have the potential of transforming people's lives. Uh, the long wait, in some cases, uh, in my own constituents, I'm aware of up to three years uh, people can wait. I'm also aware of uh, around the country that in some local authorities, they've actually suspended uh, these grants or uh, they just, it just doesn't go ahead in relation to it. So um, is there, there there's clearly is some counties around the country that it's, it's worse local authority than another. I just want to outline two cases in my own constituency. One is in relation to Daniel, who lives in Rossfield and Tala. He's on dialysis, a life, and his life revolves around getting his dialysis. Um, he, ne he needs a sterile room and a downstairs, a downstairs toilet. Um, and often uh, there's a chairlift in the house, but often he doesn't actually make it. Um, it would transform his life and his wife, Pauline's life, and their children's life if he could actually get the, the dialysis, that he could actually do it from his own home. But unfortunately, he's waiting three years and still no sign of the extension that they're looking for. There's another woman in the area, Tracy, who's 20 stone now. She's on steroids for cancer. She's multiple cancers. And this is affecting her bones, and uh, she's a couple of vertebrae on her back have collapsed, hence the weight, and um, not able to do exercise. Uh, with her weight, uh, the difficulty there is that the, the lift to bring her up the stairs is, um, is not sufficient. So again, there's problems there, not only for a wash, a uh, bath, or using the toilet. Uh, she's relying on her, her, her children, and her elderly father to look after him. Again, waiting three years for this life-changing uh, housing adoption. Minister, how many Minister families are in a similar situation as this? There are just two examples, <coughs> but it's happening right across the country. Thank you, Deputy. Deputy Desi Ellis. Uh, Minister, there are roughly 3,500 people on the waiting list for housing that are elderly or have a disability. That's just about 3.5% of the people waiting for social housing in this state. Many people placed on waiting lists would be able to go on to rent allowance. This is not much of a solution, offering unstable housing and perpetuating the poverty trap. But it is something when there is very little housing available. Unfortunately for older people or people with a disability, this is not an option. They need secure and suitable housing which will meet their specific needs. That is why we have grants in order to make housing more suitable to specific needs and to recognise the priority people with special needs must take in the housing system. Like in all other forms of public service, it is the people who need the most who are catered for by the state as the market is unwilling to. That is why cuts to adoption grants, a 40% cut announced in March of this year, are so devastating. This is the only option for many people who require specific tailored housing to meet their needs. They cannot go elsewhere and the cut is a door slamming in their face. Recently I spoke to a young mother of two, Victoria Gonzalez, who was very badly hurt in an accident. She spent a long time away from her family in hospital recovering. After painstaking rehabilitation work, she was ready to get back to some form of independent living and to care for her children despite her paralysis. Her courage and dedication facing down her misfortune was rewarded with no support from the state and she was forced to live in a cramped room in Beaumont Hospital for nearly two years. Andy Kenny in person promised her a home but nothing came of that August 12, 2012 meeting. Until last week following an article in The Sun, she had been 21 months in hospital, two Christmases, away from her family and without any hope of a change in that. Thankfully now she has been promised a home, but not every case like that of Victoria would get an article in a national newspaper or a chance meeting with a Taoiseach. Some people do not have the strength or the courage that Victoria had to push forward and claim her rights. Housing need has never been so high, but has also never been so severe. 
At one point, a medical priority was a very good signal for her that she would be housed soon. Now, in some areas, it is relatively meaningless. I am dealing with priority cases all the time, people who cannot go, in, go on in their current circumstances but somehow managed to scrape through their days. This is not discretionary spending. It is essential. Thank you, it is not a pot which should be limited by overzealous accounts, but a fund there to make sure that those who need the most get the least that they deserve, a secure home. Thank you, Deputy. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hillig, and I'd like to thank Good Deputies night. Crow and Ellis for raising this matter. As Minister with responsibility for housing, I'm keenly aware of the challenges we face in providing housing support to a range of vulnerable, vulnerable groups. The problems facing the state's finances, which necessitate reducing public expenditure to sustainable levels, are impacting on capital programmes across the entire public service. My department's housing capital programme is no exception. Regrettably, these steps are necessary to bring stability to the public finances. As a result, capital spending on housing programmes in 2013 is down on last year. Within these constraints, however, I'm determined to make the best use of the limited budget and to target those most in need. Accordingly, the social housing supply initiatives funded out of the housing capital programme are now nearly entirely focused on meeting the particular housing needs of the elderly, people with a disability and the homeless. Around €120 million Euros is being dedicated to this important programme in 2013. New social housing supply is now largely delivered through the leasing of properties to augment the smaller numbers coming from the traditional capital-funded construction programmes, and I expect that some 5,000 will be provided through this route in 2013. I'm also focusing on improving the quality and standard of the 130,000 social rented units. This will be done through a range of measures, including regeneration, a statewide remedial works and energy retrofitting of older houses and apartments. This year I brought in a new measure with funding of €10 million, Euros, which will specifically target older properties and involves the installation of attics and walls, draft proofing of windows and doors and the fitting of heating controls. Last month, as part of the Government's investment in infrastructure and jobs, I announced a €50 million Euro installation programme which will target the 25,000 least energy efficient local authority houses and bring tangible benefits to these homeowners in terms of fuel savings and comfort levels. I am conscious too that substantial grant funding was provided for improving and adapting private houses in recent times. In the past two years, almost 22 thousand householders benefited under the schemes. This year I allocated 12.4% of the housing budget, 34, that's 34.2 million euros, to the grant scheme compared to 13.2% in 2012. That said, there is no denying the fact that the actual financial allocation has decreased in line with the reducing capital budget. Allocations across all 34 city and county councils were made in as transparent and fair a way as possible. Between them, at the start of the year, local authorities had contractual commitments in respect of approved grants totalling €18 million. Euros. Historically, local authorities have been encouraged to maintain continuity in terms of approving and paying grants. Commitments carried forward into the new financial year have always had first call on the available funding. This year, each local authority was allocated the full amount of their contractual commitments and the balance of the available funding was allocated on the basis of each authority's share of the new applications on hand in January 2013. So it was a completely fair and transparent system. And I believe this is an equitable way of apportioning the funding, although I appreciate that this approach has resulted in lower than expected allocations for some authorities. I accept that particular difficulties are arising in some local authorities and I am taking steps to address this. I set aside a small contingency to deal with these and I approved additional allocations totalling 1.2 million for 13 local authorities. Both Dublin City Council and South Dublin County Council applied for additional funding from this reserve and were notified of supplementary allocations of €118,063 and €126,111 respectively on the 22nd of April 2013, bringing the Council's overall allocation for 2013 to five, five, uh, £5, 50, and £1 and 98 respectively. Through active management of my department's overall housing budget for 2013, I'm now in a position to allocate additional funding to two priority areas. Firstly, there is a pressing need to augment the supply of special needs housing to meet the needs of people with a disability. Together with my colleague here beside me, Minister Kathleen Lynch, I have published an implementation framework for the National Strategy for People with Disabilities. As a sign of my commitment to that implementation policy, I am allocating additional funding to support a call for proposals from local authorities aimed at the acquisition of additional units of accommodation for persons with a disability. 
My department asked local authorities to submit proposals in this regard by the 16th of July, and I intend to announce a list of approved projects as soon as possible afterwards. Secondly, I agree with the deputies that additional funding is needed to address urgently needed adaptations and fittings that can facilitate people to remain in their own home, and I will be allocating additional funding to the grants measure, and I hope to be in a position to notify local authorities of their increased allocation by the end of the month. So um, I have managed to secure some extra funding, deputies, and I hope it will address, in particular, the, the specific cases that you've raised, but uh, you know, a number of other very difficult situations right around the country. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, the deputies have uh, one minute each. Deputy Sean Crow. Um, I welcome the fact that you have, come up, you have come up with some sort of additional funding in relation to it. I, I still would be, you know, I think it would be useful for the House to find out at some stage, you know, what the actual waiting list for many local authorities is, and I'm getting, you know, information off other TDs that, you know, in some areas it's just not happening at all. So it would be terrible for, for, some, for someone that has a serious illness that, you know, if they move from one county to another, it's, it's better, better outcomes for them. And particularly in the area of dialysis, or someone that's actually stuck in hospital that can't get out of their, their, actually their own, their, back to their own home. And, you know, I don't think it's cost effective what we're doing in the long term in relation to this. If you look at how much it costs to keep someone in hospital and how much it would actually cost to, uh, to do these housing adaptions. The other advantage, of course, Minister, is that, you know, this could act as a stimulus package in the sense that, you know, these uh, shovel-ready you know, shovel jobs that could go, go ahead straight away tomorrow in relation to, again, create employment and put more uh, funding in, into the economy itself. It's something that I think right across the House, if you can come up with solutions in relation to this, but there's a crisis out there and the fact that, you know, in my local authority, people are waiting up to three years. There's others that are probably waiting longer, Minister. Now, we're talking about people in serious bad health, and what this is having is an, a, a hugely negative impact, not only psychologically, but physically, um, and uh, the impact it's actually having on the family. So, welcome the fact that there's extra funding, but wait and see and how much this can transform the, the difficult situation in the, many of these families. Are. Thank you, Deputy. Thank you, Minister, and um, I, I too welcome the extra funding that you're talking about. But it's also fairly clear that there's small but essential adaptions, whether in public or private, um, such as ramps widening of doors and handrails needed, and they're put on a less priority list. And in Dublin City Council, for instance, I have a number of cases where people are in hospital and they can't get out of, they've not been allowed out of rehab or out of the hospital, and the families won't take them out of the hospitals because they can't even get a ramp, they can't even get the door widened. It's just the basic thing to get them into the house and, and be able to get, out, get in and out of the house. And that's one of the problems, because there's absolutely no way they're going to get the, the adaptions that's necessary in this present climate, but at least have the opportunity to, to get in and out of their own home and be able to access it. So these are the problems that we're facing. And, and it's, you know, they're being told, look, um, we go on the transfer list and uh, we'll try and get you a place when it comes up instead of adopting the house. And this is pulling people away from their communities, pulling them away from the people who help them, pulling them away from the neighbours that have stood with them. And it is something that's that to be deplored. We can't be going down that road. We should be able to look after our people coming out of hospitals, whether it's for on dialysis or people that are grossly overweight or otherwise in some cases. So it is um, just unacceptable and I, I just hope that we can, you know, Dublin City have indicated they've used up all their funding to the end of the year and it's mainly priority cases. So next year they have another list already prepared and that is, is not going to be fulfilled. The amount of priorities there are massive but we also could do these small things and maybe this is something you could, you could press the local authorities to do these small things to at least get them in the door of their houses and out of these hospitals so they can have some quality of life. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, Minister? Yeah, thanks. Um, well, first of all, to say to the deputies, and I think I've said this before at, at questions, that I am reviewing the scheme. We want to make sure that, you know, we are, that, it's, that the limits are correct and that we're, we're using it as well as possible. In fact, uh, and 